Starter Pokemon, everyone loves them. I specifically, I have one as my mascot. Some get voted as the best Pokemon ever designed, while some are very questionable at least. Well, today we're taking on one of the hardest and best ROM hacks ever created, Pokemon Radical Red with only starter Pokemon. I'll be able to use every single starter Pokemon from Gen 1 to Generation 8, because the Generation 9 ones aren't included yet, but I'll also allow myself to use Pikachu and Eevee because they are also starters in Pokemon Yellow and Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Also, let me know what you think is the best starter Pokemon of all time, and don't start fighting with each other because they all deserve some love. Except for maybe Embor. If we could try and smash 29 lines for the 29 starter Pokemon, that would be amazing, and with all of that out of the way, let's jump right into Pokemon Radical Red. As we name our rival Sokka because there is going to be a little bit of a naming theme in this video, we immediately fall down the stairs into my mother's lap. Here we can choose which generation we want our starter to be from, and I decide to go with Generation 3, but no, I'm not picking Mudkip, I'm actually going for Trico because Mega Sceptile is one of the most overpowered and ridiculous Pokemon that you can run through this game with. So with Juan on the team, we defeat our rival's Charmander no problem, go to Viridian City, and I don't really seem to understand what's up. But I actually do, it's clearly the ceiling. I let my little Trico out of his Pokeball and that made him depressed. Great. I pick up my Pokedex and Oak Sparsel and head straight to Viridian Forest to grab my first starter Pokemon, Pikachu. He's definitely not going to be that useful against Brock, but we have to face Faulkner first, and here he's absolutely going to sweep. After naming her Azula with all of the lightning bending she does, I head back to the Pokemon Center to change some of my natures around, then head to Pewter City and buy an egg from an old man. I reset in front of the old man so I can keep hatching the egg until I get a third starter Pokemon, which was Turtwig. But of course, this took quite a while as I had to hatch like a billion eggs in the process. With Island of the team and everybody at the level cap, I headed straight for the museum and challenged Faulkner, fake outing his incoming Emolga after switching out into Rufflet, then bringing Juan to crush the Emolga with two rock tombs in a row. After doing some extra chip damage on Rufflet, I then brought in Azula and finished off everything with Electro Ball. With two grass types on our team, Brock should be no problem. Turtwig takes care of his Alolan Geodude. Vulpix might have burned my tiny little turtle to a crisp, but I decide to bring in Trico instead to rock tomb it. It is able to get an incinerate off and leave me with 9 HP, but as I'm trying to take it out with another one, she brings out Onyx, which is great because now it's sturdy is gone, I can take it out the next turn with a Mega Drain. Vulpix gets squashed by another rock tomb, and Arkin also takes one before taking me out, I bring in Pikachu, Electro Ball, and my first gym badge is mine. With this exceptional win under our belt, I evolve Turtwig into Grottle, Trico into Grovile, and I don't have a Thunderstone yet, so I'm sorry Pikachu, you're still staying tiny. I grab the Superior, Dome Fossil, and track back to Viridian City because I forgot to pick up the Pokevile a key item that can always heal up your Pokemon in between Poke Center visits up to six times. I had to use all of my team's power, take down Archer's Impidimp, Houndour, and my Tiena. This allowed me to get out of Mount Moon and straight into the Misty battle, which should be no problem considering every single Pokemon on my team is good against her. Well, some of her Pokemon do have Ice Punch and Icy Wind, which isn't too great for me, and her Lantern has Volt Absorb, which means it's definitely not just a walk in the park. Pikachu took care of Frogadier with a Fake Out and an Electro Ball. Floatzel came out to bait out the Electro Ball, but I didn't go for it and instead went for Play Nice to lower the incoming Lantern special attack. My island then kills with Bulldoze and Seed Bomb. I tank an Icy Wind from Floatzel with 1 HP remaining, counter back with a Seed Bomb again to go into the last Pokemon, Starmie. I go into Pikachu, use Fake Out Electro Ball, but the Starmie survives and eats a berry to bring its HP up even more. With Pikachu down, I only have one more Pokemon, Grovile, but he can finish this off with a Mega Drain, allowing us to go even higher in the level cap so this makes our rival fight a lot easier. I also think this is probably the first time ever that I've done Misty before the rival battle in Nugget Bridge. Pikachu sweeps through his entire team without any hesitation, and I pick up a Hisuian egg from a lady that sells it for a bit of money. 
allowing me to get an Oshawott, which will eventually evolve into his Suian Samurott, which by the way is way more useful and cooler than the regular one. I immediately evolve it into Duot as well, I head to Bill, turn him back into a human being, and I head straight out of there because I'm done listening to his shenanigans. I personally prefer to hear through the new Recon earbuds. Believe me, I'm vibing on the Driftville City team all day long with these bad boys. While I'm walking to the Celadon City department store, looking for new earbuds, I saw that they were actually pretty expensive compared to these new Raycons. And while they might be a bit cheaper than other earbuds, their quality is actually better than most of their competitors. They even offer a buy now, pay later option so you can pay as low as $18 at checkout. You can't even buy a Pokeball for that price. They offer you free domestic shipping straight from Vermilion City and they can even ship internationally. And if you don't believe me, check out the other 50,000 Pokemon trainers that enjoy these earbuds. They offer noise isolation but also an awareness mode so that you can still hear what's around you if you're walking across the street or anything. And if a Wailord decides to water spout you, don't worry because they're also water resistant. You don't have to worry about charging them up with your Pikachu either because they have 32 hours of battery so you can listen to the forward walk on repeat. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash wiggo to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. A huge thank you to Raycon for sponsoring this video and I hope you'll be listening to it soon with your very own earbuds. Since half of my team is weak to Bugsy, I get my ass beat by him very severely. So since this isn't a mandatory battle, I'm going to leave him alone. Believe it or not, but even the rocket grunt that gives you the dig TM whooped my ass once. Don't worry though, I got my revenge and his cheeks are as red as a Charizard. In Vermilion City, I pick up a couple more eggs and hatch them until I get a Sobble, which is not what I wanted for this next gym battle. I can't wait until Surge rips me apart. But first, a couple of double battles on the SSN did that to me. They use pledge moves and when they combine together, they create some of the most powerful things ever. I personally don't even know what they all do, but I know I had to walk past them with only one Pokemon in my party. Until I ran into another double battle with a Leap that has Storm Drain and a Surf spamming Cramorant that will sweep my entire team. So yeah, I once again put one Pokemon in my party, walked up to the captain's cabin, and got stopped by Brendan. I also evolved Sobble into Drizzile, and him and Baku had no problem taking Brendan down. After becoming Lieutenant Surge's garbage man, I eventually got the courage to actually challenge him, which was a mistake on my part. I hadn't realized that he became Thanos, as he just snapped me out of existence with his Vikavolt no problem every time I challenged him. And even if I was able to take down Vikavolt, Vault. He still had an Alolan Raichu that outsped everything, and a Mega Manectric and a Bolt Hunt that I hadn't even seen yet. So I knew I had to fight fire with fire. I evolved my Pikachu into Raichu and learned him dig. Most of the time this still wasn't enough to take down his own Raichu, let's not even speak about the other Pokemon that I still haven't had the pleasure of seeing. So after a couple of moveset and nature changes, I eventually found a way that required a lot of luck, but was able to finally destroy his Infinity Stones. His Pinchurch always swaps out after one seed bomb from Grottle into Vikavolt. I then go into Bond and use Water Pulse and manage to confuse it, which is crucial. It hits itself in its confusion, allowing me to get even more damage off with another Water Pulse. After going down, I bring in Grovile and try to take this big moth down with a Rock Tomb, but Bolt Hunt comes out, allowing me to lower his speed and do major damage with a Dig After, but I then get eaten. I take it out with Raichu's Fake Out and Discharge. His Vikavolt survives and hits me with a Volt Switch going into Pinchurchin, which I then also take down with Discharge. Vikavolt then goes down to turn after two, forcing out his Alolan Raichu. Since I know I can win this matchup, I try to dig, but he brings out Manectric after going for Volt Switch. Because of the Intimidate, my dig barely does anything, and I'm forced to bring out Paku. I do chip damage with Aqua Jet, go down. He Volt Switches out into Raichu. I bring in my own Raichu and take it out with Fake Out and Dig. One versus two. I get intimidated once again, so I bring in Grottle, go down to Flame Burst, bring in Raichu again without the attack suffering. One fake out, one dig later, and we have finally defeated Lieutenant Surge. And this was only the third gym badge. But now we can go all the way up to Celadon City and upgrade our team a ton. Before going there, I make a couple more pit stops to unlock the move reminder so we can always change our movesets on the go, evolve our Grottle into Torterra, Grovile into Septile, which 
which gives us dragon type coverage because this thing is a dragon type in this game, Duat into Hisuian Samurad which has an amazing design, and Rizal into the one and only James Bond. I then found an Eevee hiding in a Raiden and I actually wanted to evolve this into an Umbreon or an Espeon, but I forgot that he had a fairy type move so I got a Sylveon instead. An amazing special defensive wall, but not really what I was looking for. With Heibai on the team I head straight to Lavender Town, challenge Morty and take away his Shadow Ball TM as well as the Sooth Bell and Shed Shell. Now we went to Celadon City and got a ton of new starter Pokemon. Not all of them, but most. See, there's a lady here that will give you either a water, fire, or grass egg, which all contain a certain set of starters. All you have to do to get them is give them green, red, and blue shards in return, so I went grinding in Raidens to get all of those, giving me a ton of resources like bottle caps which I can also use later. This way I got myself a regular Oshawott, Totodile, Poplio, and Piplop, which I all evolved into their final evolutions. With Feet, Ariel, Slim and Polar, I headed on to the fire type eggs and got a Tepig, Cyndaquil, Fennekin, Chimchar, Scorbunny, and Litten, which I all appropriately named except for Incineroar. With those evolutions done, I did the grass type starters and got Chispin, Rowlet, Chikorita, and Grookey. You know the drill by now, evolutions, naming. There were a couple of starters that weren't available to me yet, like the Kanto starters, which you can find in the wild only, Mudkip, Torchic, Snivy, and Froki, which will all be available after winning certain battles. I now had a ton of options to craft the perfect team to take on Erika. So let's do this. She starts off with her grassy surge Rillaboom. So I lead with my plant dinosaur and use light screen on the incoming Venusaur. And as he mega evolves and goes for sludge bomb, I swap out into Delphox. I'm able to hit a Psyshock and do over half of its health, but I get put to sleep with sleep powder. So I bring in Ibrahimovich, use Pyro Ball to take down Venusaur and the next two Pokemon, Rillaboom and Alolan Electrode, which takes technically just exploded on me. Drax and the Infernape had no problem taking down Sir Perrier and Meganium with Flare Blitz, giving me another easy gym batch and allowing me to go infiltrate the Team Rocket hideout. Waltzing through Giovanni's team, however, was very easy. I only had two deaths with Infernape and Cinderace, but they honestly did most of the work with Samurott cleaning up at the end with an Aqua Jet. I grabbed the Sylph Scope and headed straight to Lavender Town to check out what all the ghost fuzz is about. We beat up a Guardian Mother. Save Mr. Fuji from the bad, bad Team Rocket. Clean up a big fatty blocking the road. And as I'm trying to head over to Koga, I get blue balled. Because in this game, you can't go there before beating Sylphco and Sabrina. So let's take down some big corporations, shall we? After stealing all of the Amazon Primes, I eventually ran into Sokka again. Which I haven't seen since the Nugget Bridge. And he, just like me, became a lot stronger. Leading off with a quick attacking Star Raptor that goes down to just a single Thunderbolt. Electric type versus electric type, but I know I'm gonna lose this matchup, so I bring in Stuart the Chestnut. Tanking in close combat and countering back with two horn leeches despite being frozen. Because frozen actually works like in Legends Arceus where it just does some damage every turn. He then has a Mega Charizard Y setting up the sun as I bring in Bond. Because of the harsh sun, my snipe shot does next to nothing and I get taken out by Solar Beam. But I still have a Charizard Killer, Raichu goes for Thunderbolt and we force out Azumarill which I also kill with Thunderbolt. If it hadn't survived. Since I gave my Cinderace Libero which is the same as Protein, I go for Sucker Punch and take out the Azumarill easy peasy. This jump bluff is actually super strong with Aerial Aid Double Edge, it takes down Cinderace so I bring in Sylveon and Moonblast critical hit to win the battle. We then do our double battle together with Brendan against the worst admins ever. I went in with Ibra, Bon and Stuart and this was by far the easiest battle I've ever had with them, only one Pokemon on my side fainted as Cinderace balled through their entire team Ibrahimovic style. And if you thought, but what about Giovanni, did he actually put up a fight? Well, kinda. Septon does major damage against his Hippo down with Bullet Seed before he goes into Guard Chomp. He was able to set up a Stealth Rock, but Septon just goes for Dual Chop, and the big Land Shark is out of here. Stuart puts up a good fight against his 4 times boosted attack Excadrill, so Ibra can come in and Sucker Punch till he dies, making the rest of the battle really easy as Cinderace cleans up Hippo down and Poltegeist, and also hits a double kick on Kangaskhan before swapping out to Kong who can Drain Punch and clean up Jovan. 
money. We take our free Master Ball, which we're never going to use, and then I head over to a hardcore Nuzlocke run killer, Sabrina. She is a really hard opponent if you're not prepared. I found out firsthand by losing to her like 20 times in a row. See, the big problems are her two Trick Room Zitters, Porygon 2 and Hatterene. Hatterene most of the time is no problem as I can one-shot it, but Porygon 2 is super bulky and is always able to get one off so that Ursaluna can come in, outspeed everything and also kill everything. So I went back to the drawing board and made the perfect crafted team. Consisting of Samurott, which is a great dark type that can take care of her psychic types, Cinderace the powerhouse, Feet the Empoleon, its steel typing can resist so much that it's necessary, Robin Hood, another ghost type for her psychic types, Meganium, a really bulky boy, and finally Incineroar. Oh yeah, did you know that her entire team is shiny too? Cool little detail. Paku and Ibra lead off the team, and her Hatterene and Indeedee should be no problem. A Ceaseless Edge and Pyro Ball later and the Hatterene can set up Trick Room. We do take a Hyper Voice as she brings in Crawdon, but that really doesn't do all that much damage. I use a double kick on the Crawdont, and I get Hyper Voice and Knock Off as I bring in Hempoleon, but none of my Pokemon go down. I miss a Hydro Pump and bring in Samurott for Cinderace and take an Expanding Force basically doing no damage to me. I then take out Crawdont with a Ceaseless Edge and Hydro Pump, but Samurott also goes down. I swap in Incineroar and she brings out Ursaluna. I go for Darkest Lariat with Incineroar to finally take out the Indeedee as she brings in Porygon too because the Ursaluna protected and her flame orb procced as well. I then use Hydro Pump and Darkest Larry to take out the Ursaluna while Porygon 2 goes for Trick Room. Her last Pokemon, Gardevoir, goes down to a Flash Cannon and Darkest Lariat, so now it's just Porygon 2 left. With a couple more Flash Cannons and Darkest Lariats, we managed to get through this fight with only one Pokemon fainting. And now we have to go through what I like to call the Route of Death. From what I remember from my past playthroughs, this round was absolutely not that hard to get through. But I think they might have changed some things around because a ton of trainers are now mandatory on this route and they all have super competitive teams. I kid you not, when it took me over two hours to get through this entire thing because I kept on losing and kept on having to change my team between every battle. From rain teams to ice teams to sun teams, it would just change everything every single battle. And since I shoot myself in my own foot because I refused to check the documentation of this game, I got pretty mad. Eventually, I did manage to get through it and reach Fuchsia City to take on Koga. So that's where we're at now. Empoleon was super crucial in this fight, taking down a Selgor and his Greninja with Hydro Pumps and Aqua Jets, although the Greninja did go down to his own life orb. Paco managed to take care of the Boom Burstic Swellow with Ceaseless Edge and an Aqua Jet. Torterra headlong rushed his Drapion. Sucker Punch from Cinderace cleared his Dragapult and finally was a Mega Toxtricity. A Boom Burst sent me packing, but Torterra can come in again, headlong rush, and we get our sixth Gym Badge. I tried to get the Silver scarf from him, but you have to show him a really fast Pokemon, and apparently Sceptile isn't fast enough, and that's the fastest I can get. So I guess there won't be any way to get that item. Before we can grab the HM for serve in the Safari Zone, we have to face Brendan again. This time I added Typhlosion to my team, and Inferno burned through his Metagross. I then swapped out into Ariel to Moonblast his Crawdont, and Polion managed to tank three Boom Bursts from his Exploud as I Hydro Pump two times to overhydrate him, and force out Metacham, who I Aqua Jet before going down the Thunder Punch. Sylveon's Moonblast takes care of it, Gardevoir also gets Moonblast twice, and I set up a Light Screen before Sylveon finally falls. Sceptile comes in and uses Quick Attack, but his Mega Sceptile outspeeds and dual chops me. I swap in Typhlosion, use Inferno, burn him while he sets up a Sword Stance, tank an Earthquake, and use one more attack to open up the entry of the Safari Zone. Allow me to grab Surf, which some of my Water Type starters will benefit from, but that's not really going to be the case against our very next encounter, May. Sceptile put in so much work, taking down Breloom and Solrock. And if I would have hit more Bullet Seeds, Relicanth also would have gone down, but his head smash was too much for me. I then bring in Inteleon and literally kill all of his remaining Pokemon with critical hit snipe shots. May was super easy and she even gave me a speed boosting Torchic as a reward, a super useful starter that we will use in the future. But first we pick up the secret key and enter Blaine's gym. 
As my brain is overflowing with Pokemon knowledge, I managed to get through the entire gym without getting a question wrong, giving me a battle with Blaine immediately, without having to fight any trainers. He was so impressed with my genius that he even went easy on me. At least, that's what it felt like. I use Inteleon to set up Rain Dance on his drowning Torkoal, immediately crippling the rest of his team. I then use Snipeshot to take out the oversized turtle, easy critical hit Snipeshot on some Flora as well. For Exeggutor, I go into Paku and use Encore on his growth so that he's locked in. I then try to take it out with Ceaseless Edge, but Cinderace comes in, which I can then take out with Aqua Jet to turn after. Exeggutor comes back out, two Ceaseless Edges and a tanked Giga Drain, and arguably his best Pokemon Typhlosion comes out. I swap in my Embor for his very first fight and also his only fight, and he just takes it out with a single head smash. His last Pokemon Mega Charizard gets stopped by the Inteleon, Rain Dance, Snipeshot, and Aqua Jet strategy. That's Blaine totally shut down. Normally I would head straight to Cerulean Cave to take on Giovanni, but first we have to go grab a couple of new starters. I get rid of Surge's rematch battle to get the Light Clay so that maybe Sylveon or Meganium can use Light Screen and Reflect strategy. In Fuchsia City, I pick up some medicine for Erika's Gloom, who then allows me to rematch her as well. And with all of the fire types that I have access to now, she once again was no problem and gives me a contrary Snivy. And if you don't know what that means, I can now get plus two Leaf Storm boosts if I want to. I also go to the Bottle Cap Guide to change some of my Pokemon's abilities to hidden abilities like Incineroar's to Intimidate, Typhlosion into Blazing Soul, and just every good ability that I can get off of them. But that's not the only thing I do in Saffron City, I also take on my arch nemesis, the Mudkip Kid. I am the biggest Mudkip and Swampert lover out there, not this guy. So I show him where the door is with my newly acquired Sir Periorid Leaf Storm and get my very own Mudkip and Mega Swampert Stone. Of course, I evolve this thing into Swampert and go to a scientist that just hands out Mega Stones for any Pokemon you show him, giving me the Sceptile Mega Stone. With all of that, I went to Misty's gym, and because she runs a rain team, I decided to bring Mega Swampert with me. And he teared up that gym, no problemo. Him and Sir Perior's Leaf Storms, that is, as everything on our team gets swept up. This gives us access to another starter, Froki. That's going to either give us a Protein Greninja or a Battle Bond Greninja. Both great abilities, not sure which one I'm going to go with yet. I also grabbed the only Kanto starter I need, I'm sorry Bulbasaur and Squirtle, you're just not as useful to me in the long run. So I evolved this thing into Charizard, with all of these new items and new starter Pokemon, more importantly, I went back to Cerulean Cave to do the Gauntlet Battle with the two admins. Normally I say this is probably the hardest hardest fight for me in the entire game, but this time they were just a pushover. My Ash Greninja did most of the work against Archer with Water Shuriken and Hydro Pumps, while Sir Perrier and Charizard teamed up to finish off Ariana, leading me deeper into the cave where Miyutsu resides, but I'm too late, Giovanni has captured him with a Master Ball, but Lance comes up, and since he's currently still the champion, he'll be helping us out against the Mafia boss. I bring with me Mega Sceptile, Kong the Rillaboom, and bond the Inteleon. I immediately take down his leading Tapu Lele with Bullet Seed from Sceptile, and Lance's Dragapult is busy setting up screens. Celestina comes in, so I start focusing on the Scrafty instead. A couple of scale shots later and it's finished, and he brings out Tyranitar. And once again, just a single Bullet Seed, and Tyranitar is no more. Celestina even hits a Meteor Beam, but we manage to survive once again because of the screens. I use Bullet Seed on the incoming Excadrill, but don't do enough damage, and both of our Pokemon finally end their reign of terror. Kong and Dialga come out, I use Fake Out, Dialga goes for Dragon Pulse, Excadrill is no more, and he goes into Mewtwo. I use Knock Off, but since he's holding a Mega Stone, it doesn't really do anything, and Dialga takes out Celesteel with Thunderbolt, giving us a 2 against 1 advantage. As Kong goes down to an expanding force, I then use a Snipeshot and an Aqua Jet to finish off Mewtwo, and get rid of Team Rocket once once and for all. We get one more victory speech from Lance, and he sends us off to Viridian City to take on Giovanni's replacement as the 8th gym leader, Claire from the Johto region. Aerodactyl vs Kong. I have Grassy Glide now, and only two of those take care of the prehistoric bird. Even though there's still Thrux up on my side, I'm still not too worried. Empoleon cleans up Naganadal with two Flash Cannons. I bring in Swampert for Mega Duraludon, but 
I am not able to take it out, but did do a lot of damage with Earthquake, so a Mega Sceptile can come in, skill shot, and force out Magirna. That's the reason why I brought Typhlosion, a single burn up, and Dracovish comes out. Sceptile gets Fishes rendered on the switch in. I go skill shot once again. Dragonite, her last Pokemon, uses extreme speed, taking me out. I bring him all the way down to red health with Empoleon's flash cannons and finally an Aqua Jet. I bring an Inteleon, but an Aqua Jet isn't faster than him because he used a Dragon Dance and one shots me with an extreme speed. I have one more Pokemon left, Rillaboom. This time I outspeed with Grassy Glide and finish up Claire with only my drummer remaining. Before we can fight the Elite Four and Champion, we have two more rival battles to go. First one against Sokka. The first one was absolutely no problem, as my Rillaboom grassy glid and wood hammered through everything. And to be completely honest with you, once we moved on to Brendan, it really didn't get all that much harder. I did first run into a Latios, which I just ran away from because it's not a starter, despite there being a weird Blaziken Latios fusion out there. Once arriving at Brendan, it got really easy, as Raichu took care of the Oxid with Fake Out and Extreme Speed, Landorus suffered a crushing blow from Infernape's Pyro Ball and Mag Punch, Mega Charizard took care of his Galarian Zapdos, just like his Hunt Tail, Jiraji then managed to finish me off with Iron Head, and my Typhlosion used his Hellfire to kill his last two Pokemon. Brendan defeated, let's head up to the Pokemon League, defeat the Shedinja guy, and build a team that can hopefully get through unscathed. And while I thought I crafted a perfect team with a tank like Chestnut, a good all-rounder like Rillaboom, a super fast priority mon with Raichu, and just three good physical and special attackers in Sceptile, Cinderace, and Inteleon. And it seemed to be that way, as I just swept through Lorelei, gave Bruno an uppercut, jumped scared Agatha, and dragged my nuts across Lance's face. And then came the final battle with Sokka, and if you don't know, his team is basically full of legendaries. I tried my hand at this battle over a hundred times, and I wasn't even able to beat four of his Pokemon. His Primal Groudon and Yveltal would just absolutely wallop everything I threw at them. Chestnut couldn't tank anything despite being my tank. And even if I managed to get past these two, his Eternatus would stop every attempt. I tried strategizing, but with these movesets and Pokemon, it just wasn't happening. So I swapped out Inteleon for Greninja, Raichu for Blaziken, and Chestnut for Incineroar, and tried again. Lorelei was a piece of cake with Rillaboom and Sceptile on the team. With grassy glides and bullet seeds, all of her water Pokemon fell. Not even their Primal Kyogre or Mega Swampert could take a single hit. Her last two Pokemon, Kingdra and Dracovish, served a little bit of a problem, but with Greninja and his resistant ability against their Hydro Pumps, I still had no problem letting her off easy. I started out with my Blaziken against his Urshifu, who quickly U-turned out into Terrakion. I set up a bunch of bulk ups and one shot at the Beast, and I tried to do the same to Urshifu, but he managed to survive with like 2 HP. With Blaziken down, I used Cinderace to use Sucker Punch, and then get a lucky burn with Pyro Ball on the next Pokemon Conkeldur to take him down too. Scizor stood no chance either, as I took it down with Flame Charge to get a speed boost for the next Pokemon Zacian, but of course, a Pyro Ball had to miss. I then almost took the Great Beast down with a Flare Blitz from Incineroar, which was once again not enough and he was even able to set up a Swords Dance, but I then brought in Rillaboom, used Grassy Glide, and one-shot his Lucario with Drain Punch. On to Agatha. Leading off with a Gengar that's actually a Zoroark. I use two Triple Arrows and get a ton of speed boost to go into the next Pokemon. Spectreer who's still outspeed, so I'm guessing it's Choice Scarfed. I am able to get a Flare Blitz off and kill, but the recoil damage brings me down to 3 HP, setting me up perfectly for a Shadow Sneak from Marshadow. Not even two skill shots from Sceptile could take down his Marshadow, probably because I got two hits and two hits in a row, and because it bulked up and used Shadow Sneak, I'm not forced to bring an Ebra to Sucker Punch. But that's no problem, because we can also take down Aegislash with Pyro Ball, almost take down Silvalli with two Pyro Balls, and as I try to take it out with Sucker Punch, I get paralyzed and killed. Ash then kills Silvalli with Water Shuriken and Mega Gengar with a Hydro Pump Water Shuriken combo, leaving Agatha in the dust or should I say, turned her into dust. Which of course means it's Lance time. Sceptile is a perfect Pokemon for him, as he can take down three Pokemon off the bat. Skill shotting Garchomp, Dragonite, and Duracozold without taking a single point of damage. 
I also get one more Earthquake off on Melmetal before going down to Double Iron Bash, so I swap in Blaziken, use a bulk up, and then kill with Flare Blitz. Of course, the recoil damage once again takes me out. There really needs to be a better physical fire type move, to be completely honest, with the Pokemon Company. His Mega Salamance is a bit of a problem, so I swap into Instinor to intimidate it, but it does set up Dragon Dances. I do a ton of damage with a Fake Out and two Darkest Lariats, before having to bring in Cinderace, who then Sucker Punches twice to bring out Primal Dialga. I get a single Double Kick off before going down, then get a single Drain Punch off with Rillaboom. Before also going down, and my last Pokemon is going to be Greninja. I'm able to freeze with my very first Blizzard, hit two more Blizzards in a row after that without missing, taking down Dialga and winning the battle against Lance, going into the next one against Sokka. Here I had the same problems as with my last team. The legendaries were just overpowering me, but this time I was able to find out a strategy to get past them. Here's how it happened. The perfect way to take down Furamosa is to use two flame charges with Cinderace because it has a focus sash anyway. Buffing my speed by two, going into the next Pokemon, Groudon. Here I'm able to hit a Pyro Ball before getting roared out into Greninja. I hit a Blizzard because my Hydro Pump won't work because of Desolate Land, and it does a decent amount but Precipice Blades takes down my beautiful frog and I bring in Sceptile. As I try to take it down with Skill Shot, Yveltal comes out. I hit a couple of those and get it down into just before half of its health. And for this battle, I gave the Mega Stone to Blaziken, Mega Evolved, used High Jump Kick, and that took care of the Big Bad Bird. I swap an Incineroar to perfectly counter his Mega Metagross with a Flare Blitz and an Earthquake. Groudon does outspeed me the next turn with a Fire Punch, so I go into Blaziken, we both miss our next two moves, High Jump Kick and Precipice Blades. I then kill the turn after, but I didn't have to lose all of this health. Eternatus doesn't take an Earthquake very well, but does counter back with a Dynamax Cannon, taking out Blaziken. I swap in Cinderace, go for the Sucker Punch, but don't kill. I only have Rillaboom left. I use Grassy Glide, take it down, and his last Pokemon is Imposter Ditto, and it decides to lock itself in with Woodhammer, allowing me to always go first with Grassy Glide and end out on top in this mirror match. And just like that, we've defeated Pokemon Radical Red with only starter Pokemon. This was a very fun run to do, because starter Pokemon are just really good in this game. They have been buffed up and have a ton of great abilities that make them so much fun to use. As always, let me know in the comments down below what you want me to do next. And with all of that out of the way, I want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. If you want to do so yourself, you can click the links in the description. It's always appreciated, but not needed. And as always, people, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And I'll see you guys next time.